Hello and welcome back to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm Emma Handy. And we got Dan in the booth. Say something, Dan. Hi, Ross. <laughs> it's getting harder. I, I, I swear, it's getting harder, though. I'll Eventually, just, I'm going to get him. I'll do a voice for him next time. It'll be okay. Okay. No, uh, I got it. <laughs> Dan's going to be in the booth taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns. Make sure you tag at SEG Tour in the chat so he can see it and send his favorites over to us. As always, we are brought to you by Star City Games and Carnox Chairs. If you want one of these chairs, go to carnox.com slash SCG. Make sure you get that 10% off for using the affiliate link. We are playing some modern today. Modern's the talk of the town. We're playing some decks that we think could be good in this sort of slowed down <laughs> new modern format that doesn't even have faithless looting. Oh yeah, I'm I'm looking through my deck over here. I see a Stoneforge, a Jace, a Force of Negation, Spell Snare. I'm about to have myself a time. Yeah, I got to play the Stoneforge Mystics last round. It didn't go so well. You get to play the Stoneforge Mystics this round. Hopefully, it doesn't go so well. Because I'm down a match. Well, so what am I playing against? You're playing against Amulet Titan. This is a very complicated deck. Uh, we played sometimes on <laughs> versus before, and it's always fun because I kind of know what I'm doing. Weird but flex, I, but okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I'm getting it down. I've played probably 30 matches now with the deck. This uh, the Azorius control matchup is one that goes very long, and it is very complicated. And so I never win it when I play on Magic Online because I always time out because I'm bad at clicking. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is different now that Stoneforge Mystic exists is the dynamic of matchups like this one, where a lot of times in Amulet you're just charging up a colossal walking ballista. And finishing them off that way. Yeah. But now you actually might have to play against real pressure. Yeah, even just the modicum of pressure from Stoneforge Mystic, you know, I, I think is going to be enough to force me into a little bit more action. Uh, that'll be a little bit better for your disruptive elements. So you should definitely improve a little bit from where Azorius Control was in the past. Mm -hmm. And it was already a close matchup. But, you know, the, there are some draws that the Amulet Titan deck has that you can't do a lot about. Where I'm caverning and, uh, you know, casting six sixes. Usually you just play a Titan and then tutor for a Karoo and, and Teleri West and try to set up finding another Titan in case that one gets passed. Karoo isn't legal, you silly goose. <laughs> what, the, what, what set is that from? Is it like Alliances? Mirage? Mirage, something around there. But I'm on the Visions. play. Visions. I think it's Visions. Visions. Okay. Can we get confirmation on that, Dan? Let's find out. Karoo? Yeah. Yeah. K-A-R-O-O. -O. Yeah. Oh, there's a Karoo restaurant in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. That's not exactly what we were what, looking for. What kind yeah, of food what? do they have Good at the Karoo them. restaurant? Uh, Karoo is from Visions. Uh, can you tell I used to buy cards over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed uh, by you and not this hand, which is not very good. It has six lands in it. Am I on the play or the draw? You were on the draw because Oof. you won the last round. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure if that was match to match or – look, I get it. You need help. It's fine. In more ways than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Karoo yeah. restaurant in question is South African, by the way. Ooh. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to Atlanta at the end of October. I'm really I excited about that trip, Atlanta, too. It's east of Massachusetts. There's an optometrist. How do you mix those two things up? <laughs> There's an optometrist in Pont City Market in Atlanta, Georgia. That's where I got my wires crossed. Their you, name is just Carew? That's their last name? Yes. Their doc, Dr. Carew? Do you see optometrist and think that that's an eatery? It's in a, it's in a market, Emma. Come on. Okay. So get east lunch. Of, east get of my Ma glasses checked up on the way, you know. Yeah. East of Massachusetts is where I need to go to get some South African cuisine. Apparently. So I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. But it's really, really. Oh, wait, no. This cards are actually great. So unless you have a fast hand, this hand's probably okay. We'll try it. Whatever. Let's go. Okay. Convince me to mulligan. Keep yourself. Look, this hand is really close. I don't. Here, let me, let me bust out my cell phone. And take a uh, a picture of this afterwards and see see what you think. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you do that. Thanks. I'll look I, I am. Yeah. Ugh. Dak, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> because he hates you. Uh, I do think this is a keep. <laughs> I'm convinced. 
I just need to draw a Karoo, and then we're in good shape. And we got plenty of those. We'll put that one on the bottom, uh, and we'll start on an Amulet of Vigor. Sure. Okay, didn't get Force Indication. That's good. So that happened. My hand was poop soup. I don't actually know Which if this you is cannot viable. get on the menu at the Karoo restaurant in Eastern Massachusetts. <laughs> wow, you seem to have a very in depth knowledge of this eatery. I will soon. It's where I'm going after the show. Yeah, I'm not actually it's sure. <laughs> I don't think that has targets. I might just be forgetting one. I hope not. Go. Show me how wrong I am. Trigger. Excellent. Pass. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. That actually makes it much harder because now I think I am priced into that. Go. Pass. Uh-oh. Allow me to say... Heck yes. Go. Pass. <laughs> End of your turn. I will field of ruin your Talaria West. I will search for a snow covered forest. <laughs> Predictable. Cut if you like. You're good. All right. Well, shock. 18. Uh, I will get... I think I'm supposed to get batter skull here because I just want a clock, but... Hmm. If I have this card, maybe I actually just want to... Is this a fire and ice or feast of famine? Oh, it's feast of famine. That card's so good in this deck. Especially when I have this card. Maybe I already have adequate pressure. We'll just take feast and famine. I'm a big fan of feast and famine in decks that play cryptic command. Yeah, yeah. Good uh, so I might get to do something real cute. Yeah, here you go. <sighs> Had it the whole way, really. Get in the graveyard, Azusa. You're not seeking anything. Shocking three again. You. Going to 16. You're at 17. Going to 17. Trigger. Discard Summoner's <laughs> Pact. <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, this didn't go so well. Go. Nah. Click, target you. I will tuck your primeval titan and manly Gazusa. I will play Tulare West to the untap and mm -hmm. pass the turn. Six U, trigger. Go to 11. Trigger on the stack, float five. I'll discard a Secured Tribe Scout. All right, still trigger on the stack. I'll go to a blue in the pool and higher Glyphic Illumination. Nice. Uh. Nice. Do I know how many basics you play? Usually it's four. Thank you. Okay, so I mean. Go. <clears throat> Float of blue. Uh huh. Trigger. Trigger. Uh 
I'm actually going to tap it this way. Apologies. <laughs> And guess I will return this to Larry West. Pass it. Actually, sorry. Uh, all right. Now we'll be in mana short. This will be fine. Brainstorm. Kind of just an embarrassment of riches. I don't even need that many lands. I'll just put those back, I guess. I already played a land this turn. No, I didn't play a land this no. turn. So I do want those two. I'm just trying to figure out how I can lose this game. I don't think I can, but it would be real embarrassing if it happened. Play a colonnade. Combat. Six. Uh, float two. I'm a five. Uh, two in the pool. Opt. Actually, I'm going to keep this player your list. Okay. Bottom, draw this mystery card and go. Yeah. And I am dead. We finally found a, a green Karoo, so that's good. Weird flex. We, we can build on this. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so kept a hand that just needed the crew, didn't find one, uh, and was easily dispatched. You know, I, Without the Stoneforge Mystic, I might have had a lot more time there to draw out of my hand. So the opening hand was Hallowed Fountain, Colonnade, Field of Ruin, Field of Ruin, Stoneforge, Click, Jace. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm into that hand. Yeah, I... I, uh, it was really hard when I forgot how good Feel of Ruin was. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's the whole story. It's okay. We all, we all make mistakes. It's true. It's true. Uh, this match tends to go long, so we're going to keep this one to a best of three, which means sideboarding will happen now. We're going to take a short break here, come back with that all set up, so don't go anywhere. Hello, and welcome back to Sideboarding here on Versus Live with Amulet Titan against Azorius. Are we calling the Stoneblade or Control? Control. Azorius Control, sure. Uh, less sideboarding on my side of the matchup now that this deck plays Karn the, Gate, the Great Creator, at least some less do. So uh, a bit of our sideboard space is eaten up by that. So not a ton in terms of swaps here. We've got a Singleton Pact Negation as a good two-door target. Uh, you'll often find amulet players trimming uh, land, you know, one of the you know, weird two to target lands that doesn't have a lot of functionality in the matchup. In this case, it is Kabira Crossroads. Also upgrading our beast here from an 0-3 to a 5-3 in a matchup where we want to be attacking instead of blocking. I can't believe you would say that is an upgrade to the sloth. It is. Knock, knock. 
Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting. Moo. Yep. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting sloth. <laughs> Interrupting sloth. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> enough of the enough of this nonsense. The scar does nothing. No, but it's ve- it's trying its best. The only thing it's the scar very does very cute, Ross, is ruin my hopes of connecting with a curious obsession flying man. So what you're saying is it does something. You have some creature with a curious obsession, and the sloth just reaches up. <laughs> Very slowly, <laughs> as the curious flag bed is going around and just swats it How out. How do of the I air. keep just running into this thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, we got a nice little, uh, you know, target and thrag test, good against removal, good against jace, things like that. Uh, give us a little bit of extra pressure here, uh, increase our threat density by a bit, and then pack to negation is a great thing to tutor for off of Teleri West when we're already ahead to try to lock it up uh, against something like Cryptic Command or what have you. What we got on your side? So uh, a lot of the cards that I'm cutting are things that just aren't necessarily very good in the matchup. Spell Snare we saw last game just didn't actually do anything. Does it counter uh, anything? Yeah. I don't know if you heard remember at the beginning of the last game, does this, does this target anything? I don't think so. I have an explore. Ooh. <laughs> So we're cutting them. Yeah. Uh, sort of Fire Nice is one where I don't actually think that card's that great in this matchup. Uh, a lot of the time, whenever you have Sort of Fire Nice and Sort of Feast and Famine, you kind of have to weigh if the way you're going to win the game is by increasing your resources or depleting your opponents. And against you, I think it's better to be trying to deplete your resources most of the time. The, the protection uh, for green also relevant when you're trying to attack, attack through Thraktos, Primeval Titan. You Arboreal know, Grazer. Arboreal Grazer. <laughs> Plant tokens. Right. And as a result, I, I think a lot of the time I'm not really going to be searching for Sword of Feast and Famine. You don't exactly want to draw the equipment most of the time. Uh, hieroglyphic Illumination, uh, a lot of the time, isn't necessarily something you have time to be doing. Um, and I don't want to have too many copies of it and get choked on them as a result. And finally, Path to Exile is a card that I want to trim here, specifically because I really need to answer some of your creatures if they hit the battlefield but I don't want to get choked on two or three copies of Path to Exile stuck in my hand while you're looping Primeval Titans because while I need to get them off the battlefield, this is not a means to an end against that. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing in Surgical as something to hopefully make my counter magic a little bit better against you. If I can, say, counter a Titan and then Surgical them, that's going to be very strong. Disenchant hurts your card in the Great Creator package as well as the card Amulet. And then Force of Negation is just a fine card against all of your packs. Yes. As well as your, how you turn one amulet. Definitely one of the cards that I think makes these Stoneforge Mystic decks good. I'm not sure how good the card would be without it. Because turn like turn two Stoneforge with Force of Negation is really nice. Puts them in the squeeze of being forced to answer their, your creature on their turn. And then you just get to force it and go on with your life. Yeah, that's kind of the cool thing about Stoneforge Mystic in general is it if they wait until your turn and let you untap with the Stoneforge, you can just put the thing into play, and it's too late. Too late. We got any questions over there, Dan? Yeah, we do. Uh, we actually have a couple of uh, burns that I want to take care of first. Okay, hopefully they're directed at Emma. No, they're actually... Yeah, at somehow you. I suspected that. I'm yeah, hot enough been, without them. There's been a large amount of the whole Rex Sage thing. I mean, yeah, we get that. But let's be creative with them. A couple of them that I actually like, uh, from Wooded Mesa... Please tell Ross and my team set our group chat photo to him realizing he didn't sign for it in his pact. <laughs> I would love just the deck box of... <laughs> oh, man. That would be sick. Uh, the other one from Mastermind. Can we get a Rex Sage command in chat that says check your sideboard? <laughs> I can guarantee you the Rex Sage is there. I did think about bringing it in in this matchup, but the equipment is not particularly... Uh, you know, threatening. Uh, I can usually go over the top of it if I'm executing my own game plan. And I do still have one copy of engineered explosives in the in the deck that can be tutored for. It's less efficient at dealing with equipment, but it's more flexible in that it can deal with, you know, Vendillion Click. It can even deal with something like Jace. Uh, so I think it's a slightly better singleton in that regard and gets tutored just the same, but by Teleri West instead of Pact. Sure. For actual questions, um, from Igloo Boy 8 
What is the best suggestion for someone who is starting blogs for F for MTG? Uh, out of your wheelhouse there. So that's actually how I started writing magic articles was uh, I would just kind of write articles for myself on Tumblr and then later a uh, free website, cardconfidence.com that I think it wasn't quite WordPress, but it was something similar. Um, the biggest thing I would say is if you're trying to write like magic strategic stuff, um, try if you can to write for yourself. Uh, be comfortable with the idea that people probably are not going to read it for a long time. Um, it's hard but do it because you love doing it, not because you want to get something out of it other than the satisfaction of having done it, so to speak. Um, a lot of times the most successful content creators are the people who are good at what they do as a result of their passion kind of showing through their craft and, you know, always try to improve, but don't be disappointed if it takes a while to catch on. Perfect. We did one more and then we'll get started. Okay. Uh, let's see. I did have one. Nope, we had you. Okay. Um, from Pedro de Valley, what do you think about uh, Veil of Summer in uh, Amulet Sideboard? It's a reasonable option. Um, because of like, the sort of awkward nature of your mana base, you can sometimes be squeezed on green mana, uh, but not that often. Most of your lands do produce green. So that's definitely something to look into. Um, like I said, that with the Karn in the deck, your sideboard space is at a premium, and a lot of the sideboard space in this deck is built towards interacting with, uh, you know, early creatures, things like Path to Exile, there's a Celestial Purge in here, uh, and things like that. So you probably don't have space if you're going the Karn route, but if you're going Karnless, then you should have space, and that's definitely a good option. Yeah, it's a strong card. I think, especially in the Karn version, like you mentioned, your sideboard space is really, really constrained. And one of the things that the handful of cards you do get to sideboard are doing is kind of fixing problems. And a lot of times the Amulet deck hopes to get paired against the Thought Seize decks, the Cryptic Command decks, etc. So it's hard to say if that's a, the best use of your sideboard. Yeah. Uh, I have a reasonable hand here. We've got some acceleration, uh, at least one threat, and, you know, we're going to get to play Magic, so that's that's an improvement. Yeah, I, I've basically won this game. I'm just waiting to, for, to, for to kind of play my cards in the order I have them. Okay, okay. And we'll start on a Skur Tribe Scout. Neat. You're up. And a surprisingly important card in the matchup because against Field of Ruin, you can you know leave this up and then activate it, put in a bounce land and bounce the land that they're targeting. So you get to protect some of your more important uh, singleton lands, namely Cavern of Souls. Uh, that was a very good draw. So I will play an Amulet of Vigor and get it Force of Negation. It's okay, though. Uh, let's play a Slesny Sanctuary, return this gemstone mine, and pass the turn. 19. I'm not actually sure that that was the best blue card to pitch. The issue, though, is I don't want to pitch all the blue cards in my hand eventually, and if I keep that force of negation, it kind of implies that I'm eventually going to be pitching another card, and these are not that different, but are better in their own ways. All right, so let's go ahead and go to 18. Are we getting batter skull or sword? I'm going to get sword. Don't have that? Yeah. Okay. On your end step. Hold on, let me make sure I'm getting the sword. I believe I'm getting sword. Um, so the big thing is I want to get here. believe if I have a good amount of disruption like that, I still just want to stick to resource removal and making sure I never have to tap out. Okay. So I'll activate this, put in gemstone mine again. Yep. Get a nice little reset on that one. And then let's play another one. I'm going to make blue with both of these, and we're going to transmute Teleri West floating green. That will find our Cavern of Souls. And then I will pass the turn. How do we win from here? It's 
possible, we're just supposed to do this to try and tag that card. Um, the big issue is if he has a Pact or a Titan, the way that we win is answering the Titans anyway, rather than trying to make it difficult for him to find them, because the game is presumably going to be long enough that he will find them. So I believe that means we are just supposed to do this and pass the turn. Instead of activate. I'm shocked. Let's put in Simic Growth Chamber. Turn one of these mines. Uh, cast Summer's Pact. Sure. Oh, that's actually foolish. Hold on, I apologize. Yeah. Are we going to try to mana leak this, or? So the issue, if I do this, I don't get to put my sword in and start attacking. And I think I need to try and find something to make these cards relevant. I guess either way, this could inform my decision if I don't, if I'm just going to probably have to cycle that anyway. So fetch brings you to 17. Yeah. Do this. Cut if you like. Yeah. Cycle. What do we find? Okay, well, that makes it a little bit better for us to try and get this online. So in that case, that's good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's find Primeval Titan. Now that we know we have the Titan, we'll deploy a Cavern of Souls naming a Giant and cast an uncounterable Primeval, uncounterable primeval Titan. Yep. Now... That's an interesting option. Um, interesting indeed. Kind of want to try it out. So, yeah, let's get Field of the Dead Talaria West. Mm -hmm. So we can set up to eventually return this Talaria West to get another Titan if we need it. Uh, and now we can start making them zombies and have a threat that <coughs> way. So I will pass the turn. They have six different types of lands. Yep. That is not bad. Okay, so we can do things that way. I'm going to fetch. Brings you to 16. Yep. <clears throat> Cut if you like. Suit up. Attack. I go to 17. Yep. Um... Float some manas here. Yeah, I'll float too. And I don't believe I have anything to do with it. So we are just going to pass. I would like to declare an attack. I would like to tap your team and bounce to Larry West. Oh, I need to pay for this pack to my upkeep, my bad. Uh, yeah, let's make sure I do that. Um, and bounce to Larry West.
That is fine. All right. Yeah, these are <laughs> tapped. All right. I have effects still inside of combat. I'm going to surgical to area west. I'm at 14. That's pretty good. Uh, there should be only three in the deck. You have two cards in here now? Yep. Uh, I'm a little worried about losing my Field of the Dead to a Field of Ruin at this point. But you didn't... Uh, yeah, I guess you did play a fourth land. Um, but I would like to fire off this Ancient Stirrings. Yeah, and let's hold the Sanctuary to play with Tribe Scout later on. So we'll play Gemstone Mine. We'll use that one to stir. Sure. Okay. We, we found a colorless card. <laughs> and it is not a bad one, seeing as it will uh, cleanly answer sword slash stone forge. Unfortunately, we cannot cast it right now while Emma is tapped out because we have two colorless lands untapped. Uh, so I will just send the turn back. Oh, that was not it. <sighs> have a couple of options available to me where I can do a trick with this card to try and deal with that engineered explosives. That may be our only avenue into even staying in this game. So I think we might just have to do that even if it feels bad. Because even, it, yeah, because we're just, he's going to be able to pay for a mana leak no matter what. So that means you have two in hand, correct? Yes, yeah, you right. know them both. Yeah, yeah. The sanctuary. Okay, well. I guess that means we're just going to have to take a really painful hit. So hard to believe that that's the thing to do here, but let's go to 12, try to give ourselves the most mana we possibly can have. Attack for three. I uh, go to 14. Trigger, float five. <laughs> then snapping cryptic. Yeah, I believe. Is there a world in which I'm supposed to bounce draw my own Snapcaster? Just to still have a Snapcaster? I don't think so. I cannot knock you off of three colored sources to make the EE suck. Could bounce sanctuary, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is not enough to cast EE for two or three and pay for a mana leak and crack it. So that would take seven total. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> Bouncing land feels so bad. But I think them's the breaks if I want to win this game. Yeah, we are going to bounce your growth chamber and draw a card. Yep. Oh. Can you remind me your life total really quick? I think I'm I forgot at to record 14. it. Okay. It's two attacks, so that's not fortunate. Yep. Draw off this cryptic. <sighs> that's close. Trigger. Yep. Guess I get a batter skull out of my deck. A uh, year ago. No one tap land, please. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
E for two. Italy. Hey. Yep. Oh, I'm Activate. dead. Because you get to get an untapped land yeah. and play the untapped land. Okay, cool, cool. Play for turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to lose this, but we're going to deal with Emma's board and then make two zombies on this attack uh, and be pretty far ahead. Yeah, that's the point where I would have a batter skull and nothing in my hand. That was foolish. Maybe I just... just hmm. I don't know what I would get, but I got some. I got some lands to Dude, do some things. A world. The way that I can win from there involves. No, it doesn't involve Field of Ruin. Yeah, I have no idea what the game I win from there looks like. Yeah, it's a tight spot. Maybe I should have hieroglyphic illumination and hope to hit force of negation. Do you have? You had two in your board. You had, were there any in the main? Yeah. Okay. We have two a more. Million. You have four post board. Yeah. Oh, I like lists that are heavy on force. Force is real good. Yeah, I agree. Do you have any questions? We had so many people <laughs> screaming packed in chat. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not, let's not do this again. I did not come close to missing a pack trigger. If you notice in the tournament, I was very uh, adamant about placing very large objects on top of my deck. Yeah. Why is this thing here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but on Versus Live, you know, we're a little bit looser. Oh, I, I've noticed. With the pack rules. <laughs> Sorry, right. you got to get your wins somehow. To be fair, tournament magic is also looser with the pack rules than they used to be. That's true. Oh, you forgot a pack trigger last round? Don't worry about it. Really, really don't like that rule change. Yeah, it's whatever, I guess. I hate that it's a little gameable. But yeah, no, anything that incentivizes like your opponent to be like, ooh, I know this, but it's not it's better for me to like wait for you to tap your lands. Yeah. Yeah. So um one question that a few people have been asking, Emma, uh, why didn't you just hold up snap force negation? Sometimes you don't see all the lines. <laughs> I don't have any other good reason. Still just not really used to the card and uh, forget that those have real mana costs sometimes. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would have been at six. It would have been nice. Yeah. Still would have been a tough game because I'd have a bunch of zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, six, six, but... Then you would have like batter sculled me or something, or I guess you know, you found that off the canter. You would have gotten the batter skull the next turn. Yeah. Hmm. Sort of been like, get the batter skull, move the sword to the snapcaster for you. Uh, untap my lands when you oh. go to attack the next time. Put batter skull in. Well, put the batter skull into play before before you untap your lands, and then you can move the sword over to the batter skull. I have a six six pro green. Well, no, Walker. but um, I have to cast the stone forge in this still. And that's two of the mana. Yeah. And then two more. You had five. Right. And two more puts the sword. Oh, I see, I see what you're then saying. You yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, I had five mana. Yeah. Two to cast it, two to put it in. Th I, then your land's on tap. Right. Two to move it over. All right. Seems good. Seems. All right. I'm going to try this one. It's like a little shaky, but. Sand is very slow. Because I don't have a turn one green source for this tribe scout, it would be turn three. I'd probably have to discard from a Karoo in turn two. I'd probably have to mulligan this on seven. I don't think I can give this deck too much time to set up now that they have Stoneforge Mystic. For poopy sort of feast and famine. All right. While you're shuffling up, uh, we got AU Lowry and Chan, Anthony Lowry from uh, one of yeah. our good friends. Uh, he asks, what are your thoughts on Mono Red Prowess? Uh, deck seems a little inconsistent for my taste without looting. You know, you're just going to flood more often. Your, uh, you know, your draws aren't going to be as smooth. Uh, it was already a deck that was, it could be a little house of cardsy. You know, like when you're, when you're turn one and or turn two, uh, creature just gets bolted or pushed or something, you know, you, you kind of 
dirtle around a bit, hope to set up a, a Bedlam Reveler. Reveler is harder to set up these days now that you don't have looting to sort of fill your graveyard. Um, so I'm not a big fan of it. I think before with looting, I thought it was a better version of burn. And without looting, I think it's a worse version of burn. Yeah, I just don't have a... I don't know a concrete reason to play that deck over burn anymore. That's kind of my thing. That's yeah. like the most concise thought I'll have. Like instead of playing Boros Charm, you play La uh, Lava Dart. <laughs> All I right. I do like me a Lava Dart. I love Lava Dart, sort of. I hate it, but I love it. And uh, I don't know. That, uh, that mirror is usually, as far as I'm aware, not very good for... Um, for the prowess deck if they don't have one of their explosive draws. Yeah, I do think Burn is favored in that matchup. Just more individually impactful cards. Helix, um, Core Firewalker, also real strong. Yeah. And then the the increase in Burn and the arrival of Stoneforge Mystic is also incentivizing people to play more cheap removal. And that's what you don't want to run into playing the prowess deck. Whereas in a Hogak metagame and a metagame where that, like, is it Phoenix or good? Cheap removal was not a particular, was not uh, right. th uh, that impactful especially the card lightning bolt lightning bolt is quite good now yes so yeah to way down way down on monorad prowess oh did i know the open on day one and got smushed smish mushed on day two yeah yeah sometimes that happens uh this seven is certainly keepable we got some acceleration uh, we're going to have to put one back, and it's probably just this one because we don't need to accelerate that fast. So let's put that one on the bottom. Go. You can start on Colonnade. I will start on Gemstone Mine Tribe Scout. Yep. You're up. So I have this, which is a pretty easy land drop here. Uh, actually, I guess this is an easier land drop, but... The question is basically if we want to do something about this scout or if we want to try and hold this up instead. And because if he gets a turn to untap with it, there's not really a ton of purpose in doing this. Uh, I assume we're not going to be able to stop him from ever casting a primeval titan or resolving one. So I'd rather hold a path for that instead. So we're just going to pass here. Um... Gemstone mine, pass the turn. End of your turn. 19. Now we'll get a tapped hallowed fountain. Cut if you like. Go. On your instep, I will activate Scourge Drive Scout. Sure. Put in some growth chamber, two triggers. Two triggers. One trigger. Okay. I don't have Amelia. Emphasis on yet. So All we're right. gonna bring this one back. Yep. Do, um, I, do I get to untap? No. Uh, I'm gonna get a real forest instead of these poopy snow covered ones. Might be a little risky to go ahead and do that, but it's worse if we let him untap with the mana for it. And that is. It's actually not zero chance that this would have been better in that case. Now that we have all this available, emulate the vigor. Um, we do some math. Uh, if you put in one. So unless you have like two, I'll respond to that spell. Path. Probably should have done this on the upkeep, but it'll be fine. Or draw step, I guess. Now that we have all this going on, we aren't as worried about expending it. 
get that land onto the battlefield. Search for a forest. This time we'll get snow-covered forests, so if we find Field of the Dead, we're diversified. And Amulet Resolve. Yep. It's possible we just get rolled by an Azusa here, but hopefully not. I uh, do not have an Azusa, but I do have a second Amulet. Yep. And then I will play this forest that you know about. And pass the turn. Play a land. I'm done. Okay. I don't think there's any reason to play into a counter spell here when we don't need to, so I'm just going to keep playing lands and passing the turn. That's not good. Who are we targeting? What a quinky ding. That's not good either. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I keeping them? Yeah, you can keep them. Yeah. Those. How's the ballista covered as I suspected? Draw. 17. Go. Good draw, Ancient Stirrings. So I really want to try and hit a land for that so I can apply some more pressure here or for this. So, oh, I really don't want the Ballista to resolve, though. So I guess it's fine. Okay, let's get to Laria West. Uh, I will then transmute... Central area west. Uh huh. And I will be finding a cavern of souls. So that will get me through uh, all these counter spells. I can find it. Now I can try to set up a really big ballista uh, by playing the cavern here and then growth chambering next turn. But I really don't want to risk the cavern getting Field of Ruined. And as long as the, the Ballista is big enough to uh, answer the click and eat a path, which is about what it's going to do, I'll be happy. So, because this is five mana, or this is six mana, this will be seven, and this will make four with two amulets, so that'll be 11. So I'll be able to play a five-point Ballista as opposed to a three-point ballista, which is not a huge difference to me. So I'm just going to play the Sun Home. I still want to keep this growth chamber around in case I need a bunch of extra mana on a later turn. Uh, so play Sun Home and pass. End of turn, I'm going to bounce, click, and draw a card. Sure. Effects during your draw step. Yep. Fetch brings you to 18. Yep. I'm going to get another basic island. Click targeting me. Yep. Got another amulet. All right. I will bottom your walking ballista. Smart. Cut if you like. You're good. Play an amulet. Yep. Play growth chamber. Yep. Return this thing. Yep. You're up. Just need to draw some threats. Needs threats deck. All right, we'll, we'll put you to 14. Go. And primeval time. Nope. That does count as a threat, but it is likely getting countered. But we will. We'll play it in a valiant attempt at doing something. Um, I guess I could play around multiple mana leaks by 
playing this other Karoo in my hand. So that'll make six mana and essentially render all mana leaks irrelevant. Uh, is that something I'm interested in? Uh, maybe? It's not even a particularly good Karn, I don't think. What's it even finding? Engineered explosives? <laughs> Deal with this click? <laughs> Uh, it would either be that, Worm Coil, or Lattice, and, uh, so how much mana do I, so with this crew, this generates six, that gives me a 10, 13, 14, which is enough to cast a six drop after the Karn through a click, or through a leak, but not through two, so I might as well just cast the Karn here, and if you have two mana leaks, you get it, Karn. Indeed, have multiple mana leaks. So I'll pay for the first one, force you to snap. Yep. Uh, this will get countered. And um, I guess if I had done this first, I would have saved three life because I'd still have the Karn on the battlefield. But you know, whatever. You're up. Would you have just I, let the first mana leak counter it? Uh, no. Not when you. Uh, I potentially force you to snap. Right. Yeah. And I hadn't played a land, right? Yeah, because I was thinking about playing this. So we'll just play the mark. Sure. Uh, you're at, I'm at 14. 14. Colony is lethal next turn, even without attacking with it this turn. Right. So, and so I guess that three life is relevant. But if I attack with it this turn, it just... Is lethal through... Is there a way you could get, like, walking Ballista and then it's lethal through Ballista? Teleria West can... Yeah. So I think that beats Teleria West. No, Primeval Titan just kills me. Um, so that doesn't matter as much. So I guess we'll just play it conservatively. Go. Nine. And... Mulligan into a hand with that Excellent. many threats. Excellent. Through a lot of lands. Very skill testing magic. Love Vendillion Click. Always loved a Vendillion Click. Vendillion Click is my favorite magic card of all time. Really? Yep. That's sweet. It was a big favorite of mine in Legacy playing the blue, the Is It Prowess deck. Played it over Bedlam Reveler when that was a sweet decision to make. <laughs> Just the, the versatility of what Mundane Click does, like getting a little bit of value for yourself, cycling a card, getting to see their hand maybe, you know, when to all the different ways in which you can time it, the middle the combat, the draw steps, the end steps, oh, the yeah. respond to your spell to see, like, what's going on in this counter war. Uh, At wow. the time, Terminus was a thing you could click with it. Yep. All the things you can do with Mundane Click, love it. Oh, love yeah. me and a little tempo flash threat. I'm in. If you ever uh, used it to... Uh... <laughs> Have you ever used it to uh, miracle your own thunderous wrath on their upkeep? You know, I have. I haven't done that one. Wow. I, 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 I assume, boy, it got brain, really. assume it got brainstormed to the top. Uh, yeah, with this big brain. <laughs> that is a big brain play. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's nice. He just uh, Moto asks you if you would like to reveal it to for to pay its miracle cost. <laughs> I would love to. Yes. It's a matter of fact. I, I would not like to do this moto. I would love to. <laughs> love to do. Now this. that you ask, do you yeah. got any questions? Um, not at the moment, but we are a little bit over right now, so okay. I think we should just yeah, ease that's on the... down to our next matchup. Okay, another five minutes. Yeah. Okay, five minutes for us to set up the last match of the day, where I will be playing Titan Shift with a sideboard reclamation sage that is not coming in, staying in the sideboard. So we're playing against a Devoted Druid combo deck. So Doesn't it have Stoneforge? The Devoted Druid deck? Yeah. Does it have Viridian Longbow? Something that Reclamation Sage could reclaim. Can it, though? Does it actually? We'll be back after this.